It's time for the big interview. What is going on here? I demand an explanation. The big names, the big news, the biggest stories, the next big thing. What's the big deal? It's the big interview. You talking to me? Who do you think you are? We have a big show for you tonight. Money Life brings you the big thinkers, top experts, the brightest minds. I don't know how to put this, but kind of a big deal. And plenty of time to swim in their brain fluid. Oh my. So listen and learn and enjoy the big interview. The eyes of the nation are on us right now. Whatever. Fun will now commence. And today we are going to be having our fun with Kiana Danielle. She is author of Invest Diva's Guide to Making Money in Forex, How to Profit in the World's Largest Market. Now, Kiana is Invest Diva. If you're not familiar with the site, well, it's investdiva.com. You can also follow her on Twitter where she is at Invest Diva or at Kiana Danielle. Actually, she's at both, not, not or, it's and Invest Diva or at Kiana Danielle. Now, if you listen to the show regularly, you have to know that I have mixed feelings sometimes about Forex and particularly Forex trading. So before I bring Kiana in, I want to sort of tell the story of why I wanted her on the show. You know, if you listen, that I recently made a trip to the Ukraine where I was talking to journalists and I was doing one of my sessions on stupid investments because I wrote Stupid Investment of the Week for 10 years for Market Watch. And one of the things that we were trying to do was show them this stuff. And they said, well, how do you find it? And I said, sometimes you have to root around. And I pulled out my computer. I had gone while I was there to my favorite Michigan sports website because I can't go up more than a day or two without actually checking my favorite sports team. And I had also gone to Morningstar.com to do some research. Well, because you go to Morningstar.com, it comes up with investment things. Well, there on my favorite Michigan website, I'd only been in Ukraine for two days at this point, was an ad. I could not understand anything but three words. Those words were $100, $7,000, and $40,000. So I put it up in this seminar. I show them the ad. And I say, guys, I, I don't understand this at all. I only understand the three words. You know I don't understand a word of Ukrainian. But I'm going to bet you right now that with 107000 and 40000 this is some sort of leverage or foreign exchange trading program. And it's about how much money you can control. And oh, by the way, when we click through, if I'm right, it won't really tell you much about how much you can lose. And they said, uh, OK, sure, you can tell that without reading anything but the three things. And we clicked through and it was foreign exchange. And by the end of the presentation, they all were thinking foreign exchange was a bad idea. And then I come home and I have Kiana's book on my shelf. It's waiting for me here. And I take a look and I go, you know, this is actually a pretty good guide for how folks could do it if they wanted to and do it right. With that out of the way, Kiana, welcome to Money Life. Hi, Chuck. How are you? <laughs> I, I use that story and I'm doing well. I use that story because it is a case and your book makes it extremely clear. This is that not very interesting story, by the way. Yeah, it's not exactly for the faint of heart. If you're going to trade Forex, you got to really understand it. And explain to the folks, because the reaction that the Ukrainians had was the same that a lot of folks would have, which is, I don't need to do this. And your book sort of explains, you don't need to do this. But explain to my audience my, that, why they might want to, because I thought your book made a really compelling case. Absolutely. Well, first of all, as you mentioned, education is absolutely important in forex trading. A lot of people, especially at the beginning, they got into forex trading with no prior education, thinking that it's just a get-rich-quick scheme and they can just put their money, there's a lot of leverage, and they can make a lot of money. And a lot of them did. And obviously, as you know, and everybody else know, a lot of them lost money. And then that is how the horrible stories about forex trading started to develop. But as you said again, my how I started trading was not pure investment. I did not put all my money in my bas in one basket. I was I I was a I, I was having a lot of other things that were bringing in revenue for me. And I also heard about forex trading. I was not familiar with it at the time, and uh, just just set a little bit of money into forex trading and because of the help that I had at the time, I did make good money and I didn't continue it up until the next big news that was coming out, which was actually a year after. And 
again, I made money. So I didn't treat forex trading as a daily investment mm -hmm. for myself. And it has really worked for me. I almost have never had a losing trade. And I'm going to tell you why. So first of all, many people who trade, they only rely on one type of analysis. A lot of people are technical analysts and they think that the market news, they're just, you know, outdated. You cannot follow them. You cannot make, make trades based on them. They just don't follow them. Some other people only trade based on the news. Those are the fundamental analysts. Some other people are solely the followers of the market sentiment, like Elliott wave analysis and other, one, other things. So, Personally, what has always worked for me is actually bringing all of these together, which is very easy to do, especially if you're not day trading. I am not the biggest fan of day trading. <laughs> and uh, I actually also take it to a whole different level. So I call it the Investiva Diamond, a diamond that has five dimensions. One is technical analysis, two, fundamental analysis, three, sentiment analysis, for overall analysis that I actually bring in intuition, fear, and greed, and how to manage them, because those are number one killers in any kind of investment. And number five, capital analysis, which is how much money should you actually invest in Forex? Is it all your money? Absolutely not. Is it all your savings? Absolutely not. It is, for me, 20% of your savings after you have deducted everything else in your financial goals. Do you want to buy a house? Do you want to send your children to college? Deduct them and then 20% of those you can invest in Forex. So and because now you have a confidence that even if you lose this, it's not going to be a bad, such a big deal, you are actually going to make a better trade. So functionally, it's 20% of what gets lumped into your play money. Take out, take out the stuff. And I, everyone knows I hate the phrase playing the market and I'm not necessarily big on play money. I don't play with my money because it's my money. I'd be happy to play with somebody else's. Any money is valuable. Yeah. But what we're really saying is 20% of the stuff that you're willing to expose to the kind of risk that, that you're going to get from more market activity. Lay yeah. down your core of your portfolio, lay down the things that you need. Here's whatever. And then. Uh, okay, so we're talking about that much. The flip side of it is you pointed out you don't have to be that active. So how much trading are you suggesting folks do? And and with that, how much attention do they have to pay? Because part of the problem is most of the websites that talk about, hey, be a Forex trader, make it seem like you can do this as a hobbyist. And that may be why we have so many horror stories is folks going, yeah, you know, I'll do this around my work, but I got a little busy. I didn't pay attention to it. I had, you know, this or that problem. And suddenly it's not that easy. Yes. Well, trading as a hobby is not big of a deal as long as you know what you're doing. And as long as you don't, you set your stop and limits right. And you set your stop and limits right correctly only if you're educated and only if you have done your homework. Then you can just go to sleep or go to work and be sure that with the amount of leverage that you have set and the amount of money that you have invested, you're not going to be as in, in much of a risk. So I actually do trade as a hobby, but as I said, I do my homework beforehand. And the timing, uh, you, you mentioned, so how often do I trade? Or how often do I hold my trades? That is typically anywhere between three days to two weeks. And are you are there certain things that you're trading? I mean, when we talk for an exchange, I'm not sure that everybody understands. And and again, the book does a really good job of explaining it and helping folks out. But are there specific things that you know? If we're going to talk to people in this audience who are interested in foreign exchange, and I know that there are some, but who haven't done it. What are you going to tell them to trade? What's going to be the currencies and the products that they're going to use as they start off on this adventure? All right. So for starters, first of all, no one should ever start trading without practice. So the product that they should start off with would be demo accounts. And I'm not here to promote any kind of broker. I have gone into a great deal on how to choose a broker. But with a demo account, you have nothing to lose. A reliable demo account. You just put in your search engine, 
Forex demo account and you choose the one that is not asking for your credit card number and you know that you can actually practice the market a little bit. So that is the start is after having been educated, obviously. You read the book, you go through the education courses and you practice on the demo account. Next, what kind of currencies do you trade? Again, for starters, and because you don't want to spend a lot of money on spreads, major currencies that have the lowest spreads typically in most brokers. So that would be Euro dollar, dollar yen, Swissy, Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, and New Zealand dollar, and pound. Okay. Yeah. So you're looking at all those things, and again, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our time because I would tell you there's a lot more to it, and I guess that means you're going to have to check out the book. The book is Invest Diva's Guide to Making Money in Forex, How to Profit in the World's Largest Market. Yeah, I would tell you that it's a dangerous place, but I'll also tell you that the book certainly made me more confident that folks can do it. And if you want more information, well, that's easy. It is investdiva.com. By the way, it's also forexdiva.com. And on Twitter, at investdiva, at Kiana Danyao. Kiana, thanks so much for joining me on Money Life. I appreciate you taking time. Thank you so much for having me. There is a lot more to go on today's show. We're just getting started, so stick around. Money Life will be right back. 